All right, so two column proofs on this is, uh, is key. So the one thing I need to know right off the bat is what's going on with this structure. And what I notice is it's a, it's a, it's a uh, bisector, right? It's cutting this in half. And it's cutting this side in half, right? And, but it's not a perpendicular bisector. Remember all those ones we were doing, perpendicular bisector, finding the circum, circum center. Oh, you need one? Um, uh, I need one too. So glad you guys listened to all that. Oh, oh my God. God. I love you, Dan. Yep. Okay, so it's not a perpendicular bisector, it's just a bisector. So when you have a bisector of two sides, we call this a segment bisector because it's bisecting two segments. Now the segment bisector theorem says this, okay? Uh oh, are there, are there A, B, and C on this? So this is A. B, X, Y, and Z. Okay? So, it's basically saying that that AX or XA and is congruent to YA. Okay? And YB is congruent to ZB, okay? And that's definition of a segment bisector, okay? Now since they're segment bisector, what that means is these are parallel. So that does a lot. For one, we can start messing with angles. If they are asking about angles, right? Because they're alternate interior angles. Okay, right? Um, corresponding angles, okay? So when they start asking about angles on a problem like this, boom, we can deal with that because we know these are parallel, all right? But in this case, we don't care that they're parallel. We care about one thing. We care that the other part to the segment bisector theorem, there's two parts to the, to, to the segment bisector theorem. One part is that these two lines are parallel. The other part is that this perpendicular, bi or this bisector, this segment bisector right here, right? This segment bisector right here. So we're gonna put a letter there. So how about we put C? What we're gonna say is XC, right? XC is equal to ZC, and it's also equal to AB. Okay? So these are all congruent. So, Joaquin, these are congruent, all right? So, and that's the definition of the segment bisector theorem. So the difference is, these are just the definition of a segment bisector, right? And this, uh, sorry, this is actually the triangle, the triangle segment bisector theorem. So those are the two, they're a little bit different. One's just the segment bisector. When a segment is bisected, it's a, it's a segment bisector. But when a segment on a triangle is bisected, that's a whole other theorem, and what that theorem says is that these two are parallel, and AB is congruent 
to half of xz. Or in this case, if we cut this in half with putting a c there, so then xc is going to be congruent to ab. And so in that case, so would cz, right? All right, so now we got to figure out how we're going to make 34 e. How, what? How do we figure out what xc is? Well, because these are congruent, then 2xc. Let me not write that like a z. 2xc is gonna equal 34, right? Because it says that these are 34, and that's a, that's what we're saying here is then two of these. Right? And we're going to plug this in. This becomes this. Right? So if I add those up, so what we're doing is a segment addition postulate. Right? And substitution. So we're going to kind of do a two-step method. Segment addition postulate plus substitution to be able to say that. Okay? And so we're just saying, hey, these two add up to be 34. And that makes sense, right? Because they're both the same and those two add up to be 34. And the reason why we do that is so I can divide by two and get that xc is, com is equal to 17, right? And what did I do there? What's that called? We, we should know this part. Say it. <laughs> no, no, close, close. It is simplifying, but we call it something. It's not simplifying because we do it to both sides. If we were just did it to one side, it'd be simplifying. Division what? Yes, there you go. See? Division, property of equality. I knew you guys had it. I knew you had it. Okay? And now... The, e the easy part. Now we're going to substitute in. Now we know that BAB, right? AB is equal to 17, right? Because AB equals a to these two, right? But what is AB? Instead of writing AB, we could write something else, right? We're saying AB is equal to uh, XC, right? That's what we're saying. But in this case, XC is 17, and what's AB? 3X minus 1, right? So we're going to say 3X minus 1 equals 17. And what, what do we call that when we plug things in? When we plug it in? Substitution. Substitution. Good job. Okay? And then what do we do when we're solving this? This, this becomes the easy part now. If we're going to solve it, what do I do? Remember sad map? Always the opposite. Right? And what did, what, what's that called? Uh, addition property of equality. Yeah, so 3x equals 18, and that's addition property of equality. Okay? It's just so huge. This is going to save your guys' lives on that state test. Because you're, you're explaining everything. So when I say explain your answer, just do a two-column proof. Two-column proof.